Hi and welcome back. Today we will be painting 15 different types of watercolor leaves. Let's quickly have a look at our supplies for today. We will be using Winsor & Newton professional watercolors. I have picked out couple of green shades. The first one is permanent sap green, green gold, olive green and perylene green. Apart from these green colors, I'll also be using a yellow and blue. I'm using cadmium free yellow and smalt just to create my own unique green mixes with these two. Next up, we have our brushes. You can use any round brush that you have. Here are a couple of examples of brushes. Just make sure that whatever brush you choose that it comes to a point. Also, you would want to have either size 4 or size 6. Next up we have our paper. I'll be using Art Essentials 300GSM 100% cotton watercolor paper for today. It has a beautiful fine grain texture to it and it's excellent for watercolors. You can use any paper you have, just make sure it's 300GSM. Now for our optional supplies, a pencil and eraser. For some of the complex leaves, you may want to sketch it out lightly with a pencil first. Next, we need a couple of paper towels or a reusable sponge like I'm using one here. And then lastly, a jar of fresh water to rinse our brushes. Now let's dive straight into the tutorial. I'm mixing and preparing a mixture of perylene green and olive green to begin creating our first leaf. This first leaf is pretty simple. I'm creating a curved branch. Next, I'll be creating leaves which would be comprising of two simple strokes. So just observe that my brush is probably at a 40 degree angle. I am just touching it, pushing it and then bringing it up to a point. So that's what I'm doing with both the strokes. Touch, push, lift and then I create another stroke where I do the same thing. Touch, push and then lift. That's how it looks. It's a very simple leaf. Um, also just see how I am trying to add a little bit of curve to these leaves just to imitate nature because in nature there is no leaf which is stiff. All of them have some curve and movement to them. Our next leaf is even more simple. For this one we just create a branch and we will be simply stamping with our brush the leaves as you see here. Coming up next, I will be mixing a little bit of perylene green with Dumont's blue or smalt and I'll probably add tiny amounts of uh, green gold to it as well. The next kind of leaves that we will be creating will be long two stroke leaves. So once again, we start with a curved branch and then we will touch our brush, drag it across while pushing it and then lift it up slightly to a point. We do the same with the other stroke as well touch, push, drag, lift and that's it. So as you can see this is how we are creating this. Also make sure to leave that small white cap in between these two strokes. It just adds a lot of interest and a highlight and brings the leaf to much more life. For our next leaf I am adding a little bit of green gold to already mixed olive green and perylene green and let's again start with the curved branch and this time we'll be creating small oval shaped leaf now you can go ahead and create it in two ways first is you can either go and create two different strokes or you can simply use one stroke to create them one round stroke so as you see you just pick swirl your brush and that's it that's how you create that oval leaf Next up, we will be creating another simple leaf, which is very simple and great to be used as fillers. So just again, begin again by creating this branch and then make V's. So on every arm of V, you will create one leaf like so. I'm just using the tip of my brush to create that because these leaves are so tiny and delicate. We don't use much of the belly of the brush, just the tip and that's enough. Next we will be creating our last simple leaf and then we'll be moving on to our more complex leaves. This is very simple to palm leaves. You simply want to create a curved branch and then we will be painting our leaves in V shapes. Since it's a single stroke leaf, you just need one single stroke to create the leaves. That is you touch, push and then come up. Again touch, push, come up to a point. That's it for our simple leaves. Now let's move on to our more complex leaves.
For our first complex leaf, we will be creating leather leaves. So these leaves are very unique. They comprise of many small leaves and tiny branches as you can see. We place these branches in V shapes across our central branch and then add tiny leaves on each arm. Once again, I am just using the tip of the brush for these tiny delicate leaves. These are also known as fern leaves and once again they are great to be used as filler leaves in bouquets. You can add as many branches as you like and just when you feel you are happy, you call it done. Our next leaf is a variation of this leaf. So you'll notice that in this one we kept it pretty symmetrical, all the V arms and the leaves on them, it comes out to be a very symmetrical shape. In the next one we will be bringing lot of variation and it wouldn't be that symmetrical. So we'll again start by mixing some of our greens, I'm mixing perylene green and Dumont's blue to get a deep dark green color and then I'll be again giving a curved stem as my starting point. Now I'll just be drawing random branches across the central stem. They don't have to be in V shapes um, symmetrically, rather you want them to be asymmetrical. So just pick out a couple of spots and add some branches and once again add these tiny leaves with just the tip of the brush. Again, if you want to utilize the tip of the brush to use uh, and to create these tiny leaves, you ha you'll have to make sure that you hold the brush at a more upright angle. So currently I'm holding the brush at round about 60 to 80 degree angle. And that's how I am able to get these tiny strokes with the tip of the brush. Once again, when you are happy, that's when you call it done. There is no right or wrong with this leaf. Just make sure that you add enough branches and small tiny leaves to it. You can also add nice flowy branches like I just added the one right here. There are absolutely no rules to it. Just have fun. Now for our next leaf, we'll be painting our eucalyptus leaves. For that, you'll have to create a disconnected branch. Wherever we have left space, that's where we'll be putting eucalyptus leaves. First, we'll fill up these spaces with the leaves. Once again, you want the leaves to be in different directions. I am making some which are facing towards the top, some which are facing towards bottom, and then a couple of them which are just straight. And then now I'm drawing leaves which are towards the back, so I'm just creating this oval shape for those leaves. And that's it, we are done with our eucalyptus leaves. Now we'll be moving on to our dusty miller leaves. For that I'm actually using a lot more blue in my green. So I've mixed perylene green with a lot of Dumont's blue to create this nice dusty blue color. And if you observe dusty miller leaves, they have ruffled edges. So that's what I'm trying to create here. With small strokes, I'm trying to create those ruffled edges. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm filling in the insides. We will be painting it again, so just observe. We begin by creating a curved central branch and then we add a lot of small strokes of different width and sizes just to give it a ruffled look and we'll do that till the very end. Once you're happy with the overall shape, you can go and fill in the central part with more color and make sure to leave some white space in between the center as well because that again adds so much highlight to the leaf. So we are done with this. Next up we will be painting cilantro leaves. For that you want to have really really thin branches that's what I'm doing thin flowy branches and then these cilantro leaves are composed of very small quick strokes. So make sure that you do quick strokes 
almost like a spade shape you know jack of spades i'm re- doing a reference to cards so you want it to be in the shape of a spade and just quick strokes to create these cilantro leaves feel free to drop in different shades of green once uh, you've completed with your leaves and they are still wet again that it adds lot of depth and variety Next up we will be painting our rosemary leaves for that i am just adding little bit of cadmium yellow to my berylene green and then adding and mixing it with slight amounts of olive green so for rosemary leaves you would want to have a lot of variation in the leaf color so maybe you can choose to do some leaves with one color and then other leaves with other color so for that again i'm identifying three major branches on which i'll place my leaves and then i'm just going ahead with one color and placing my leaves across it you want your leaves to go in all directions and they have a very unique shape that is they start very thin and then they come up to a point for that you would just need to touch your brush lightly and drag it automatically if it's a round brush and it comes to a point it will give you this stroke now comes our fern leaf this is a boston fern leaf so i'm giving it a nice central stem and then we'll be adding leaves across this stem so i'm just using quick swift brush strokes nothing too specific or particular just quick brush strokes and that's how you'll create these leaves make sure to alternate different shades of greens to bring in more depth and character to this leaf now let's paint our palm leaves it's very similar to one of the leaves we painted initially for palm leaves the overall shape matters a lot so first we start with a central stem and then we start placing our leaves alongside it all of the leaves make sure are facing towards and slanted upward direction that's what gives it that unique palm shape and now comes our last leaf for our last leaf we will be painting a very unique textural leaf so we will be actually giving it a straight stem and then taking different shades of green i'm just adding quick strokes some thin some thick some upwards some uh, slanted some flat and you want to make sure that they are quite dense so just a combination of thick and thin strokes across this single stem and that's what makes this nice textural leaf That's it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to subscribe to Art Lounge and Winsor and Newton for more such videos.